Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We give God all the praise today. Let me know you do it. Yes. What a mighty God we serve. Amen, amen, amen. We say grace and peace to all the saints. We come to you live from the United Missionary Baptist Church in Cleveland, Ohio. Church where we're building God's kingdom one soul at a time. And I don't know what you've come to do. But I've come to praise the Lord. Yeah. I've come to lift up his hand. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Yeah. He's a merciful God. God of grace. God of peace. God of mercy. God of provision. And I don't know about you, but I love him. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We bless your name. For our time together today. Hallelujah. We ask right now, oh God, that you lift up every bow down here. We ask, Lord, that you forgive us of our sin. Sin of omission and commission. Oh, God, we don't want anything to stand in the way of you blessing us today. And so right now, God, whatever it is your people are seeking, whatever it is we stand in need of, we yield totally to you. We stand dependent on your word. Our hope is in your promises. And so, Father, right now, we give you praise. Give you honor. Give you glory. Have your way in this place today. Hallelujah. Bless those who have gathered. Bless those who may be on their way. And Father, we'll forever give your name all the praise. You're so worthy of it. You're so worthy of our praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are here to worship the Lord. I give God thanks and praise for our minister of music, our, our drummer. Amen. They're going to usher us into the presence of the Holy Spirit. Dr. Craig.
for saving you. Uh, but can I tell the people of God this morning, don't let the enemy have your mind. Uh, you need to guard your mind. Uh, you need to guard your eyes. Uh, you need to guard your ears. Uh, let the Lord build a hedge of protection uh, around you. And so the psalmist here in the text is singing of the day when sin will finally lose and be cast into the lake of fire. Now some Bible scholars believe he's singing of the day when Judah will leave Babylon and return to Jerusalem, which is another temporary victory. But in the verses that follow, the focus shifts from Babylonian victory to God's ultimate victory. One that when the Lord comes to judge and rule the world in righteousness. Don't you know that with every day that passes, we're getting closer to the day when God will gain the ultimate with every day that passes, we're getting closer to the time when Jesus Christ is going to come. Uh, but can I help the church this morning? Uh, until then, we got to know that we still have a reason to celebrate. We still got a reason to have joy. And I don't know who this is for, but I bring you some good news. Uh, even though we're living in some dark days right now, uh, this pandemic is infecting and killing thousands every day. And it's threatening another shutdown, which means that there will be an economic decline. And even though we're witnessing a malpractice of government coming out of Washington, D.C., and even though many are despondent and depressed and feeling hopeless, I just believe that the time is coming when, like the psalmist is saying here in the text, we'll be able to lift our hearts and lift our voices up to the Lord. Thank you. 
Uh, are you celebrating today? Uh, what fresh blessing did the Lord bestow on you right now? Well, I want you to know that there's no match for God's unrivaled power. Do you think
all of God's people. Uh, and so I want to know, did you come today with a joyful song of praise? Or do you have to be primed and pumped for your joy to reach the service? My good friend, Pastor Rawlings, always says, when you think about the goodness of the Lord, nobody should have to pump you up to give God some praise. Oh, yes, can I tell you, joy demands an expression. That's why the psalmist implores everyone on earth to break into a song of praise to the Lord to make a joyful noise. Can I tell you, a joyful noise is an exuberant shout. It's not a murmur or a whimper. It's not even a quiet hum. It's more like what you do at a game when your team is winning. And I come by here this morning to let somebody know that it's shouting time. I said it's shouting time because we're on the winning side and the victory has already been won. Hallelujah in the Bible. The Jews used a shofar, which is a ram's horn, to prompt the people to praise. Then the band kicked in with trumpets and harps and cornets and with singing. And can I pull over to the side of the road and say that I know in the past, one of the biggest complaints that I've received as the pastor is that the musicians play too loud. Help me, Holy Ghost. I heard the organ is too loud. The drums are too loud. The choir is too loud. But in my honest, sanctified opinion, as a church, can I tell you, oftentimes, the people of God, we worship too quietly. Hallelujah. We don't know how to make no noise. I mean, in about an hour or so, as I look at the clock, folk are going to be packed into first Stadium and win or lose, they're going to be screaming for the crowds. Two years ago, folk were packed into the queue and they were screaming for the Brian James. And Lord Jesus, if you catch me at my son's track meet, or if you catch me at my daughter's choir concert, or shut I to a shame, catch me at a Temptations concert and see if I won't make some noise. He didn't wake me up this morning. LeBron James didn't give me my portion of strength. The temptations didn't put food on my table. But when I think about the Lord, when I think about his goodness, when I think about the marvelous things he's done, I can't be rude about it. I can't bite my tongue. I've got to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. He woke me up this morning and started me on my way up. I give him all the praise. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And I may get in trouble, but that's okay. I can get in trouble. I want to say to Trevor and Trenton, bang those drums. I want to tell Deacon Eric, turn the microphone up. Brother D, I play that organ and that piano like it's the last time. Hallelujah. Let's make a joyful noise. I wish I had a church. Yes, Lord. Who knows if celebration counts? Sure enough, sure enough. How in the world are we gonna celebrate and be quiet? Yes. We can't celebrate biting our tongue. We can't celebrate being mute. We got something to shout about. We got a reason sure to praise the Lord. Sure if you're breathing, you ought to praise the Lord. If you got food on your table, you ought to praise the Lord. If you got shoes on your feet, you ought to praise the Lord. And if you got more than that, you ought to give him some praise. Hallelujah, because when praises go up, blessings come down. Oh, yes, we ought to praise him. Praise him because you once was lost, but now you're found. You ought to praise him because you've been redeemed. There ought to be a song in your heart. The songwriter said, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And that's hallelujah. If the Lord is taking care of the bird, don't you know he's faithful to us? Oh, yes, you ought to sing because he's spring in the midst of your winter. You ought to sing because he's fruit when you're there. You ought to sing because he's glory in the midst of this gloomy world. Is there anybody here who has got a song in your heart? You ought to give God some praise. You ought to lift up your voice. You ought to give him a shout. You ought 
And so if you keep it notes, we celebrate <laughs> celebrating salvation. And we're celebrating with the song. And then lastly, how many know there's a time and a place for celebration? Hallelujah. And guess what? The time is now. And the time is forevermore. How do I know? Because in verse 9, it says, Before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth with righteousness, shall he judge the world and the people with equity. The psalm is right, for he comes to judge the earth. Listen, the psalm is called for unreserved praise. It now shifts from the Lord's present victory to his future triumph over the entire world. In other words, for the first time since Adam and Eve, God's perfect justice will reign all over the earth. The battle between good and evil will have ended. And God's righteousness will reign for eternity. And so let me give you an overview of what will happen leading up to that victory. First of all, how many of you know Christ will return to conquer the world and rule over it for a thousand years? That's called the millennial reign. During the time, Christ will judge all ungodliness and evildoers. And when the millennial reign comes to a close, every unbeliever, alive and dead, will stand before him at the great white throne of judgment. It is then when they will be judged for their evil works and every sinful thought and every sinful word and every sinful deed. And following their judgment will come their sentence, which means they'll be cast into the lake of fire for eternity. But can I tell you, that's not the end. It's only the beginning. What I mean is with the final judgment comes the establishment of a new heaven and a new earth. For the old heaven and the old earth will be destroyed. And from then on, Christ will reign as King of kings and Lord of lords. And so as I get ready to close, I want you to know that today is the day we got to celebrate. We got to celebrate our salvation. We got to celebrate it with a new song. It's a song of praise for the great and marvelous things that God has done. But oh, what a day it will be when the dead in Christ shall rise and reign with him for all eternity. What would you do if you saw Christ coming from the clouds? What would you do? Would you gaze up in heaven like the men from Galilee? Would you look to the hills from whence coming your help? Would you be able to say, judge me, O oh God, for I have walked in my integrity? Would you be able to say, the Lord is my life and my salvation? Whom shall I fear? Would you join the millions who worship God saying, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that was in me, bless his holy name. You ought to have a song of celebration, a song of thankful praise in your heart. When I was growing up, there was a song on the radio that said there's a party going on right here, a celebration to last throughout the year. So bring your good times and your laughter too. We gonna celebrate your party with you. It's celebration time. Come on. Let's celebrate.
and you will be found not right. Have mercy. If you're listening and you're watching and you know you've never accepted Christ in the free part of your sin, you can receive him even now. Just repeat this prayer after me. Lord, I am a sinner. But I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sin. I believe God raised him from the dead. I believe that in his hands, he holds all power in heaven and in earth. Come into my heart, Lord. Fix me where I have broken. Heal me where I am wounded. Fill me with your spirit. And I'll live the rest of my days for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, find yourself a Bible preaching and a Bible teaching church where you can carry out the spirit of that prayer, where you can learn of your spiritual gifts, where you can learn of the Lord's will for your life. We invite you to join us here at the United Missionary Baptist Church where we're building God's kingdom one soul at a time. We're located right here in the inner city of Cleveland, Ohio, on the corner of East 93rd and Union, 9312 Union Avenue. God bless you, and may God keep you, and may heaven smile upon you. Listen, we are entering into the holidays, and for many, uh, it's not a happy time. For many, uh, we know that there's some empty seats around the table that would have been there. For all of us, it's different this year. Because <laughs> we, we're, we're in the midst of a pandemic, and, and we have to maintain social distancing. But can I tell you, I just believe that if we just hold out, if we just hold out, things are going to work out. And maybe not this year, but next year. Will our Thanksgiving celebration will be even more powerful and be ever more meaningful? Next year, Christmas will really be worth celebrating. And we know that Jesus is the reason for the season. But, but y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm being real right now. I'm being real right now. We, 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 we can't do it like like, like we used to do it. We can't do it like we want to do it. But wherever you are on Thanksgiving and on Christmas, you ought to give God some praise. And know that maybe your family can't be with you, but he's always there. And I just believe if we just do what we need to do, huh, we're going to really see the salvation of the Lord. We're coming out of this. We're coming out of this. We're coming out of this. That's why David said, Yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I won't have no fear. Because he's with me. Is the Lord with you? He's with me. And so it's a cause for celebration. Want to remind the church that we're here. We thank God for those who have been faithfully attending and those who have been faithfully giving. I want to remind you that uh, we have an obligation and responsibility as a church to take care of God's building. And then we do that through our tithes and our offering. I want to remind you and encourage you to continue to do so. We thank you for those who do electronically. We thank you. We've got mail, um, got checks in the mail. We thank you. And to even those who are watching us and um, who have been blessed by this ministry, and if you're blessed and you want to sow a seed, you can do so. We're on the Gilbertai app, Cleveland, Ohio, United Missionary Baptist Church, Cleveland, Ohio. We thank you because guess what? We see you. We got people who are not members of this church, but they're watching and they're faithful and they've been blessing this ministry because they feel that this ministry has been a blessing to them. And for that, we say thank you. We say thank you. God bless you. And God keep you. I want to say to everyone on behalf of myself and my family, and on behalf of the United Missionary Baptist Church family, we say happy Thanksgiving to you, and may the Lord be with you. Amen. And as much as we'll be celebrating this week, we'll suspend um, all 
all about our activities, our prayer um, meeting on Tuesday, and even Bible study this coming Saturday. We know that um, uh, folk may still uh, be doing whatever they're doing. Um, if you don't want to, um, you know, as a matter of fact, guess what? We can still pray. We're we going to have prayer meeting Tuesday. Yeah. Amen. The Lord said the same. We'll see you in Bible study on next Saturday. Amen. Amen. But get ready to leave. Get ready to leave. Be thankful. Amen. We have a reason to still rejoice. Amen. We have a reason to still give God praise. Yes. We can give Him praise because we're saved. Amen. We can give Him praise for His salvation. That's a thankful celebration. Amen. We celebrate around here. Amen. Oh, man. We know that on Tuesday, the Lord tarries that young man on the drums will be 17 years old. Amen. Growing up to be such a fine young man and a good looking young man. He must take out his father. But he's so good looking. Amen. And, and just before we leave, y'all can we, we just help me. We're going to sing a little bit for Trey. Oh!